today's topic is end breaks. End breaks basically means the breaks of the yarns while the spinning is continuing. During spinning, unfortunately, yarn will break time to time on some spindles due to variety of reasons. The breakage cannot be made zero, especially with cotton spinning or when you spin staple fibers. We only try to reduce or minimize the breakage frequency, but we, we have not been able to make it zero. And breakage is the result of yarn strength tension interaction during spinning process. Why it is important that is because the breakage will lead to a loss in productivity on several spindles wherever the yarn has broken. And the second thing there is possibility of producing a faulty yarn because will every breakage needs to be joined. Today fortunately we have automatic pieces and therefore the piecings are done by some machines, piecing units and they do a much better job. Earlier we used to piece the thread manually and therefore these piecing used to be a source of fault in the yarn and therefore it used to create fault in the fabric also. So end breaks therefore affects our productivity and it also affects the quality of the yarn and hence can affect the quality of the fabric that we finally produce. Therefore, we need to study the end breaks. Now, let us look go to the fundamentals point. We are showing a diagram on the right hand side. This blue cup, bell shaped cup that we see it here that is the strength distribution diagram or tenacity distribution diagram of a yarn let us say. And we are showing a bell shaped cup so that we know that the this is following a normal distribution and the mean breaking stress is the mean value is mu b with average strength of the yarn. And now let us say operating stress that is tension during spinning operation is mu 0 shown by this orange line. So, the orange line is here as it has been shown it is on the left hand part of this particular diagram. So, the operating stress is nothing but basically the tension that is acting on the yarn during spinning operations which is less than the average strength of the yarn. So, mu 0 and mu b indicates operating stress and mean tenacity of the yarn and S represents the standard deviation of yarn tenacity. So, variability part is represented by S. So, any yarn that we produce or we make will always follow a kind of distribution as it is shown here. The strength will never be uniform. If we take the yarn and go for 100 readings or 500 readings and then from those readings if we try to plot a distribution diagram of strength or tenacity then we will get a graph like this as shown it here and therefore, we will see that there are segments of yarn which are quite strong which is falling in this zone and there are segments of yarn which are weak which are falling somewhere here and we have strengths which are of different magnitudes, but this is how the yarn is 
and we say this is the actual variability which is present in the yarn in the strength parameter of it. Now, if the operating stress level is here as shown in this diagram, then the proportion of breaks we can expect to be this part, it is hashed part of this graph is showing the proportion of breaks that we might expect. Because any segment which is weaker, any segment which is less than mu 0, that is all these places here, they will all break because they are, they are weaker or their tenacity at that segment of the yarn is less than the operating stress. And due to this, the yarn will break. As soon as that segment of the yarn is going to be spun and the yarn is traveling from the front roller nip to the bobbin surface. During this journey, they are going to encounter the stress level, the operating stress level and they might break because its strength is less than the operating stress. Well, therefore, we can say that the area of this part of the curve represents the end breaks probability that we will expect. C v of strength or C v of tenacity is S by mu v into 100. So, an abbreviation by mean strength into 100 will give you the C v of strength or C v of tenacity, whatever is the unit we choose, either it is tenacity or it is strength. C v will be S by mu v into 100, this goes by definitions. From there, the relative stress is mu 0 by mu b. This ratio is known as relative stress. It is operating stress divided by mean strength of the yarn. This ratio is known as relative stress. Now, if I want to find out the area of this curve which will give me the probability of break, then we need to find out the value of the normalized variable z. And if you are familiar with the standard normal distributions, then you know that z by definition is mu b minus mu 0 by s, where mu b is the average strength of the yarn and mu 0 is the operating stress level in the yarn divided by standard deviation will give me the value of z. So, minus z in this case is this, why it is minus? Because mu b is less than mu 0, mu b is here and mu 0 is there. So, this is going to be minus z if we write then this would be uh, mu 0 minus mu b by s. So, the operating stress level is mu 0 and mu b is the average breaking strength of the yarn. So, mu 0 by mu b is the relative stress. In terms of normalized variable, if I are interested to know the what is the area of this part, because that area will basically give me an idea, if I know the area of this part, that is going to be the probability of break. So, if you are interested to know what is this area, we need to know what is the value of z, that is standardized normal variable. So, in terms of normalized variable z, we can write z is equal to mu b minus mu 0 by s, where s is the standard deviation and because mu 0 is less than mu b, so we are writing it is minus z. Though mu b is greater than mu 0, so the value will come z as a positive, but this is in the, on the negative side, on the, on the, on the, on the left hand side, so we are putting it as minus z. And from there, if we divide it by mu b, both numerator and denominator, we get 1 minus mu 0 by mu b divided by s by mu b. And 
the upper part it becomes what relative stress and the lower part is basically if I multiply it by 100 we get the standard deviations. So, higher the value of z the less would be the probability of break that means if this value if the operating is mu 0 if it shifts in this direction let us say I have this goes in this direction. So, this line is let us say somewhere here it shifts by some amount in that case what is going to happen mu 0 is going to be less and therefore, this value the value of z is going to increase. If the value of z increase that is z will shift from here to there and this area is going to reduce. So, probability of break is going to reduce. So, anything I do if I can reduce the operating, operating stress level my z value is going to increase that practically means area of the curve on the left hand side of this line on this line is going to be less and therefore, probability of break is going to be less. The other thing is if we can reduce this strain C V that if I can make this blue curve narrower or narrower then that also can help me to suppose I make this curve let us say I make this curve narrower. So, let us say I have a curve like this the second curve is narrower. Now, the area on the left hand side of the blue line is only is this much that means basically if I can reduce the C V of the strength then also the value of z is going to change is going to increase and the area on the left hand side of this vertical line where the operating stress exists is going to be less that basically means the probability of break is going to be less. So, narrower the curve that basically means end breakage rate is going to improve. The other thing what we can do is if we can shift mu b if mu b can be shifted that is if we can increase the average strength of the yarn then also we will have a positive impact on end breakage rate. So, that you have the following options with you from this theory either we increase the average strength of the yarn if we try to reduce the operating stress level which is acting on the yarn during the time of spinning or we make the curve narrower that is we reduce the strength C V of the yarn. All of them will have a positive impact on the frequency of breaks that we will encounter during spinning operations. Then causes of end break the yarn breaks whenever the spinning tension is greater than strength of yarn anywhere between yarn formation point and cob. So, whenever the tension spinning tension exceeds the strength of yarn anywhere between yarn formation point and cob. See the yarn segment is traveling from the front roller nip to the cob surface this is a long length of yarn and as it is traveling if any segment of the yarn is weaker than the spinning tension the yarn is going to break. That means, any thin place in the yarn and a peak tension will occur simultaneously the yarn is going to break because spinning tension is also not constant is also fluctuates. So, it may so happen that whenever the peak has come at the same time there is a thin region in the yarn which is crossing this zone spinning zone or balloon zone or winding zone in that case the yarn is going to break or the yarn spinning tension is more than the frictional grip 
of front drafting rollers on the fibers. In that case also the fibers will slip from the front roller nip and therefore the yarn may break or spinning will discontinue. Now weak portion in the yarn from front roller nip to the cop surface. So as you see that the yarn path is quite long, so which part is really weakest? If we try to look at the yarn path right from the front roller nip to the bobbin surface, then the weakest part is the twist triangle part. So this part is the weakest because there is no twist here and therefore though fibers are there and same number, but the twist is not there and hence this is the part which is the weakest. The other weak regions will be any thin region in the yarn. So if there is any reason for the formation of thin places in the yarn and as soon as those places try to cross this zone and they move from the front roller nip to the bobbin surface, these regions having less number of fibers are weaker and therefore they can also break. The other thing is low twist regions, if by any means the yarn has low twist, then also it will be a weak portion because we all know that till we reach the optimum value of twist, the strength and twist relationship is almost directly proportional. So the more twist means more strength until we reach the optimum level of twist. Beyond that more twist means less strength. So classification of breaks if we go for it, then we see that the breaks can be classified as catastrophic break, breaks due to gross fault in the yarn, avoidable imbalance in S and T interactions where A stands for strength and T stand for tension. And the first one is unavoidable interaction between S and T. So avoidable interact imbalance or unavoidable imbalance between S and T, the strength and twist interactions. Catastrophic breaks could be due to traveler flying off due to some kind of defects in the traveler. Sometimes the traveler will fly off from the ring and it may lead to sudden breaks. Collision between balloons due to absence of balloon separators, this possibility is also sometimes could be there. Floating flop getting caught by the yarn and fails to pass through the traveler. See the a lot of fibers which will escape twisting action during spinning operations, they all float around and these flops are going to settle down on the ring, on the traveler and on the floor of the machine and on many other parts of the machines on the floor of the shade and sometimes they accumulate on the traveler and some and they go together as a bunch along with the yarn and they form a kind of naps in the yarn and this might cause breakage also. Failure of suction clearers leading to roller lapping that is the suction clearers which are there just below the rollers whenever there is a lapping possibility is in order to avoid lapping we generally keep some roller clearers and the clearers it may not function properly maybe they are overloaded with fibers they have not been cleaned or maybe suction is not working properly. So suction clearers if they do not work properly because of maybe pressure has reduced in that case there is a chance of catastrophic break because roller will start lapping and it will lead to breakage immediately. Breaks due to gross fault, the gross fault could be in the roving, torn or grooved aprons or faulty cradles, anything is possible. 
avoidable imbalance in strength tension interactions. One is jerky movement of the ring rail. So, ring rail is supposed to move up and down quite smoothly, but if due to some mechanical fault with the chains, links, whatever are there, uh, if some of them do not function properly, then that could be jerky movement of the ring rail and hence that could be breaks also. Damage ring and worn out traveler. This could be a source of problem also, ring is damaged and the traveler is worn out. If we force the traveler to run, then also there is a chance of you know, yarn breakage because tension will be very high. Vibrating or out of center spindles and bobbins, it will lead to tension peaks. Incorrect choice of spinning parameters such as improper traveler weight, either the traveler is lighter or traveler is too heavy, heavy traveler need more tension and therefore, possibilities of breakage. If traveler is lighter, there is a chance of balloon collapse, both will lead to breakage. Improper traveler replacement, that is traveler is burnt out, but we have not replaced. In that case, the friction between traveler and the ring increases and which leads to more tension and therefore, the yarn might break. The operating stress level will go up. Improper ratio of bare bobbin to ring diameter, we know that dB by dr has to be less than 0.5. That is dB is the bobbin diameter and dr is the ring diameter. If that ratio is not maintained, in that case there is a chance of because then winding tension is going to be very high and therefore, breakage would be there. Eccentric drafting rollers also is a source of problem. It will generate periodic variation in the yarn. There will be periodic mass variation in the yarn. That means, periodically we will be generating thick regions and thin regions. Thin regions will be a source of problem because number of fibers being less there, they will be weaker and hence prone to breakage. The other things are reduced gripping on fibers held at front roller nip leading to slippage of fiber ends due to use of hard cords or lower roller pressures. This also could be source a problem because the spinning tension the fibers may slip from the grip of the front rollers when you use very hard cords. The hard cords do not deflect much and therefore, the surface area of contact between the roller and the fibers is going to be less and hence the fibers may be pulled out. The other thing is roller pressure being less, the frictional grip on the fibers will be less and therefore, fibers may slip. Improper drafting parameters that leads to high yarn irregularity and numerous weak places in the yarn. See, if the drafting parameters are not correct, that is if the break draft is not correct, the setting is not correct and that may lead to a lot of irregularity that can be generated and more irregular yarn that we produce, more weak place also we generate and therefore, we may end up with more breakage. The low yarn twist, there are possibilities of twist being low, either there is something wrong with the selection of the twist well or Maybe the belt slippage could be there, that is the, uh, in the force spindle drive, the tape, certain tapes may be loose or in the case of tangential bed drive, maybe the belt is loose or the, so these problems basically means that the yarn twist could be low. Or the actual drop greater than normal leading to finer yarn count. That is also important that sometimes the actual draft is greater than what is we are supposed to keep due to something going wrong with our manual calculations or whatever may be the reasons and that may make the yarn finer and finer yarns means that 
generally weaker in terms of absolute strength and therefore, we may encounter more breakage. Incorrect choices then further if we go high end breaks in fly frame or basically roving frame. If the end breaks there are very high, then we can expect more breakage in the yarn also during spinning operation. Every whenever there is a end break on fly frame or speed frame, basically all the spindles are stopped immediately and we then mend the breakage and then restart the machine. So, whenever there is a restarting of the machine, then what happens that the portion of the roofing that we generate at that time in all the spindles, they are little defective in terms of mass distribution of the material. Besides, whatever in which spindle there is a breakage, when you join it, there is also the joints is not very, very perfect that piecing point of the roofing are also source of fault. So, fault because of the piecing and false because in all the spindles are stopped and we restart it. Whenever we restart, there is a chance of roving stretch and therefore, roving stoppages we should minimize as far as possible. We want to make sure that there is no breakage of roving during roving preparations because that could be a source of problem further in the ring spinning operations. High ambient relative humidity would basically mean that the uh, possibilities of lapping will increase and that will lead to more breakage because lapping means gradually yarn will be thinner or delivery from the front roller will be completely stopped. High count CV is also a source of problem. Count CV basically means high basically means there are some segments that I am producing which are thinner or thicker than the average value that we would expect and this will lead to more breakage. Thin regions of the yarns are weaker and that will cause more breakage. High medium term mass irregularity is also same way any types of irregularity that we generate could be a source of end breakage in the during spinning operations. Whenever due to any reasons, if the yarn becomes thinner in some regions, as soon as those regions will pass or the roving becomes thinner, and roving has a periodic variety or I generate periodic variety during spinning operation itself because of wrong drafting rollers, drafting rollers becoming eccentric or some other gears have become eccentric due to some reason. In that case, whenever the thin regions are passing, there is a chance of breakage. And inadequate formation of fiber film on ring surface. This point was discussed earlier that the formation of the fiber film on ring is very, very important because unless the film is generated because of the uh, scraping of wax from the cotton fibers and the fibrous dust that is getting generated, a fiber film is produced on the ring and this reduces the friction between ring and traveler. So, unless this film is produced, the ring traveler friction will be very high. But once it gets formed and stabilizes, the ring traveler friction reduces and that is spinning tensile will go down. So, if the formation is not correct, it is inadequate, then the ring traveler friction becomes very high, spinning tension goes up and therefore, more ends will break. Now, comes to unavoidable imbalance in strength tension interaction. Unavoidable irregularities introduced during draftings are a source of potential break in yarn. See our drafting system, though we have aprons in the front zone, and we have better quality rollers in terms of their concentricity. We have improved the aprons 
and the cradles still some irregularities will be always generated because of quite a few reasons. One of them is because we have a random arrangement of fibers. And the second thing is drafting will always a source of redistributing the fibers in some way and therefore is a source of variation in mass. Only we try to minimize it. So, some irregularities will be always generated which is unavoidable. The exact number depends upon the pattern of variation of twist and tension during spinning. This can be considered as legitimate breaks. So, because of this drafting irregularity and because of random distribution of fibers, some minimum amount of breakage is always expected. The exact number of breaks depends upon the pattern of variation of twist and the tension during spinning operations. This can be considered as legitimate break. So, some breakage we have to consider as legitimate, we will not be able to avoid and it should be acceptable to us. Breakage caused by machine elements. If we see it from a different angle, that is how the different machine elements are contributing towards the breakage, then let us say we are interested to know how ring travel and interaction is going to affect the end breakage rate. So, we have listed some causes and their remedies also. Number one, ring traveler. So, it is all about ring and traveler. Unsuitable traveler type may cause end breakage. Try another traveler shape or change the wire profile. So, traveler is unsuitable not because of mass, but because of its shape. So, we have C type of traveler, we have electrical traveler. So, we have to choose the right traveler in terms of its shape and also the wire profile also. Spinning tension too high or too low. In that case, we have to adjust the traveler weight, mass of the traveler. Uneven spinning tension and yarn tension speaks. Recenter the rings, balloon control rings and thread guides. We have to make sure that all of them are properly aligned so that the spinning tension remains even. Poor condition of the ring, in that case, we have to replace the rings, there is no other way. Traveler jam, check condition of the ring and change the traveler type of travelers. Then breast caused by drafting components, top roller covers worn out could be a source of problem. Top roller covers are too hard, in that case as I said the grip on the fibers may be not so good because the roller is not going to yield much and hence the knee area over which the fibers are gripped by the uh, top and the bottom rollers is going to be smaller and that way it will going to slip from the knee area and therefore leading to more breaks. Wrapping tendency of the top roller covers. So, that tendency also sometimes increase which could be because of one thing is because of pretty high relative humidity or maybe the top roller surface needs some kind of you know, modifications. So, one treatment that we give is known as burkulizing treatment to the top rollers. What we do here? Radiate the surface of the freshly buffed rubber cords with UV light which will alter its structure. The rubber surface become less aggressive to the fibers. This considerably reduces the tendency to form laps. This treatment is given whenever roller surface are buffed. So, the surface becomes very hard or we find some cracks over there, then we go for buffing and when we go for buffing, we go for this treatment known as burkulizing treatment. Top roller cover surface too glazed or burkulizing process is too long, regrind the top roller covers and reduce burkulizing time. Run out 
fault of top or bottom rollers. Regain the top roller covers, alignment, proper aligning of the bottom rollers is also important. Damage top roller bearings, replace complete access if the top roller bearings are damaged. Poor gliding of aprons, we have to wash the aprons or we have to replace the aprons as the case may be. Flap accumulation in the cradle, either we have to clean it up or we have to choose a new fresh apron. Breaks caused by other factors, one is insufficient yarn strength related to selected speed. If the strength of the yarn is less in comparison to the speed that you have selected, in that case what to do? Adjust the spindle speed, that is we have to reduce the operating stress level to shoot the yarn strength. Because once the fibers has been chosen, we will not be able to change the fibers. Yarn evenness, if it is not, evenness is not good, more breaks will be there. So in that case, we have to check the spinning preparations and we have to check the drafting system to find out what has gone wrong and we have to accordingly take corrective actions. Raw material, sometimes raw material could be a source of a lot of breakage. Main things which will change it here, we should check is the short fiber percentage, the average strength of fiber. In the case of synthetic fibers, we have to look at the spin finish also. These things needs to be checked in that case and if possible, we have to take corrective actions. Climatic contents not optimal or maybe too much of fly. Optimized climatic condition that is relative humidity and temperature needs to be properly set. We have to make sure that relative humidity is proper throughout the shade and we need to adjust the blower and exhaust installation so as to make sure it is not too much humidity should not be there or the air should not be too dry as well. Breakage during doffing, yarn unthreading from the travelers. In that case, change traveler type, the shape and profile. Setting of the machines, adjust the loading speed of the ring rail, check the startup program, compare it with other machines. This needs to be done. Balloon stability, too slowly built up. We have to increase traveler wet to make the balloon stable. High curling tendency of the yarn, that is delay startup of drafting system in comparison to spindle. That is the, sometimes what happens is that the drafting system may start early in comparison to the spindle. The spindle gets its drive through tapes and tapes are generally flexible. So, if we switch on the machine, what happens? Normally, drafting system will start earlier in comparison to the spindles and spindles will reach its final speed. It takes little time. It may be a millisecond or microsecond, but it takes little more time in comparison to the, the time the, the drafting rollers will take to reach its highest speed or maximum speed. And therefore, there is a chance of curling up of the yarn and in that case, you have to delay start up the drafting system. This is the there in some of the modern machines, it will be there. So, the drafting system will start up with little delay so that the spindles have already reached its highest potential speed or the target speed. With this, we close this session and thank you.